Hello and welcome back to the Local Lea Project, or welcome here if it's your first time. I've been reacting to many different countries, including the Netherlands, Sweden, the UK, Norway, and much, much more. So let me know in the comments below where you're from and what I should check out next. And today, I'm excited to get back to it. I've been on a little vacation for the last week, and you guys have dropped a lot of recommendations for me. So without further ado, we're going to get to the channel Bicycle Dutch. This video is Systematic Safety, the principles behind Vision Zero. So let's see what it's about. In the U.S., traffic <clears throat> accidents claim 100 lives per day, along with thousands of serious injuries. If any other industry had a death toll like that, it would be shut down immediately. Seriously. And this is a problem that I have felt in my real life, because... I knew people, I've said this in a video before, when I worked in Fort Worth, um, it was a downtown area, a city center, and there was bike lanes, but they weren't very safe and drivers did not respect them. And it was very common for my coworkers to get hit by a car on their bikes. And uh, actually, I don't think you guys know this yet, but I myself was hit by a car when I was a kid. You can see my head is kind of messed up. So, uh, yeah, it's a real serious problem. And this is actually kind of a big discussion in our politics right now, although no one quite has a solution for it. Countries like Sweden and the Netherlands believe that mobility is a basic human right. No one should have to risk their life to get to work, or to go shopping, or to go out with a friend. This is the premise behind Vision Zero, a family of traffic safety programs in Sweden, Netherlands, and other European countries based on principles of systematic safety. Since 1970, road deaths have been decreasing in the U.S. thanks to things like vehicle improvements and better emergency medicine. But and seatbelts. Uh, Seatbelts did not used to be required here. I'm not sure how it is in other countries or how it was, but seatbelts were not required until not that long ago, maybe the 90s or 80s. Um, but yeah, there was the whole click it or ticket. That's the whole campaign that they did when they started enforcing that. In the Netherlands, fatalities have fallen much more drastically. If our rate had dropped like theirs, we'd be saving 20,000 lives a year. What are they doing that we haven't done? Dutch road safety programs used to be reactive like ours, identifying and fixing black spots where an unusually large number of crashes occurs. But for the last two decades, they have instead followed the systematic safety approach. That means not waiting for crashes to occur, but systematically eliminating the opportunities that create high crash and injury risk. Our traffic safety problems stem from two inherent human properties. First, we are vulnerable. Our bodies were not made to absorb the force of collisions with motor vehicles. And second, we make mistakes, some inadvertent, some knowingly. If all of us obeyed every traffic law all the time, there would be almost no crashes. But we're human. And a system that is safe only if people don't make mistakes is not a system that is made for humans. Systematic safety recognizes these fundamental human properties and based on them has five principles. The first is speed control and separation. There's a maximum safe speed for every type of conflict, for instance, between cars and crossing pedestrians. Roads should be designed either to separate users so that conflicts don't occur or else to limit traffic speed based on the conflicts that will occur. Where people walk in the street because there are no sidewalks and at crossings where visibility is compromised and drivers might need to make sudden stops, the target speed is 6 miles per hour. This is accomplished with raised crossings. I don't think we have any speed limits in the United States that are 6 miles an hour. Like in school zones and, you know, stuff like that, we have 20 miles an hour. And that's about as low as it'll get. I don't think I've ever seen anything lower than 20 miles an hour. Um, and a lot of people treat our speed limits as, I heard this person say one time, 
it's a speed limit, not a speed minimum. Because a lot of people in the U.S. treat the speed limit as a speed minimum. So if the speed limit is 75 miles an hour, everyone starts at 75 miles an hour, but most people are going 85, 90 miles an hour. Where people might cross the street anywhere, and where bicycles are in mixed traffic, the target speed is 20 miles per hour. Because at higher speeds, the chance of surviving a collision falls rapidly. This target can be met using speed humps, raised intersections, and chicanes. Hmm. Where driver That's interesting, chicanes. I probably never would have noticed that. That's a really interesting concept. Humps, raised intersections, and chicanes where drivers are expected to yield at pedestrian crossings, <clears throat> the target speed is 25 miles per hour, because at higher speeds, drivers are reluctant to stop. The 25 mile an hour target can be met using narrow lanes, crossing islands that create a chicane effect, and limiting roads to only one lane per direction so that cars cannot pass each other. Where traffic meets at a 90 degree angle, the maximum safe speed is 30 miles per hour, based on the capacity of car frames to absorb side collisions. And finally, speed should not exceed 40 miles per hour unless traffic is separated by direction based on the capacity of cars to absorb head-on collisions. Bicycles can be mixed with other traffic only up to a speed of 20 miles per hour. Beyond that, bikes should be separated. Bike lanes can provide sufficient separation on streets with one lane per direction and no parking. But on multiple lane roads, and on roads where speed exceeds 30 miles per hour, and next to parking lanes, bikes should have a separate path. Controlling speed means much more than just posting a speed limit. Hold on guys, let me make sure. Yeah, just want to make sure it's still recording. I hit the wrong button a second ago, but I wanted to say in the United States, we keep expanding our roads. And so we keep expanding the roads out this way, adding more lanes to the road and this way, adding more lanes to the road. But I can't help but wonder what things would be like if instead of expanding our roads so much, we just added a bike lane there because we have room on almost all of our roads to in between the road and the establishments. We have plenty of room to be able to put in bike lanes, but we just don't. Bikes should have a separate path. Controlling speed means much more than just posting a speed limit. The road design has to make the target self-enforcing. Engineers around the world know how to design to allow traffic at high speed. The Dutch have also mastered how to design to prevent high speeds. The second principle is functional harmony. Roads can have many functions, such as providing access to homes or shops, hosting a bus route, or carrying <coughs> through traffic. Functional harmony means that a road should avoid having incompatible functions. For example, a street that provides access to shops will have cars turning in and out and people crossing the street. That is incompatible with the function of carrying through traffic. Based on functionality, cities should have four types of roads. Local streets with a target speed of 20 miles per hour. No lane markings. On-street parking. That differs from our residential neighborhoods because our residential neighborhoods are usually 25 or 30 miles an hour and there is not really a consistent design. They're, they're always designed differently. Depends on where you are, but there's never like a consistent design. Some of them are small, little narrow lanes, uh, narrow roads, and some of them are, are wider four lane roads, so. And traffic diversions is necessary to keep away through traffic. Neighborhood principles with a target speed of 25 miles per hour, okay. one lane per direction, possible bike lanes, and frequent crosswalks with crossing islands. Urban arterials, 
with a target speed of 30 miles per hour, with signalized crossings and separated bike paths, and without high-intensity commercial activity. And finally, regional flow roads, with wide intersection spacing and little to no access function, with still higher speed limits. The third principle of systematic safety is predictability and simplicity. People make fewer mistakes when they know what to expect and when decisions are simple. For example, in Dutch cities, red pavement means a bike lane. Everybody knows that, because all the bike lanes are red. Pedestrian crossing. Over here, they're usually green, but sometimes they don't even color them. Almost always have a crossing island because it's so much simpler and therefore so much safer to check one direction at a time. Yeah, we need more of that. And for turning left across busy roads, Dutch roads have left turn lanes and turn arrows, which take away the errors that occur when people have to search for a gap in traffic. The fourth. That drives me so crazy, guys, when you have to take a left, but you only get a. It's a yield on green, so you just have to wait until you see an opening in the traffic. That's my least favorite. The principle of systematic safety is forgivingness <coughs> and restrictiveness. Forgivingness means making it so that if somebody makes a simple mistake, it won't result in serious injury. Restrictiveness means preventing people from making the mistakes they might want to make. For example, physically separating bike lanes prevents people from parking in them, and limiting roads to one lane per direction makes it impossible to speed when there's a car ahead of you. Systematic safety has a fifth principle too, state awareness. It relates to things outside the realm of road design such as drunk driving, texting, and inexperienced operators. The mobility that automobiles and roads... Hold on. I want to see this. It relates to things outside the realm of road design, such as drunk The world's worst countries for drunk driving. Percentage of road accident deaths involving alcohol in 2015. South Africa, geez, 58%. Canada, 34%. United States, 31%. driving, texting, and inexperienced <clears throat> operators. The mobility that automobiles and roads have brought us has meant enormous gains for human prosperity and freedom. But Vision Zero says that we need not, and should not, accept an epidemic of road injuries and deaths as the price of progress. European experience shows that roads can be designed to be systematically safe. Now that's something we can live with, and something that every American city should be working toward. In the U.S., traffic... So, a concern that I have is, I agree with that, but a concern that I have is our country is so large that I'm afraid it might be too late to try to... I mean, imagine how much money it would cost to, to change every single city, you know. Our government doesn't like to spend money on, on just about anything unless it's the military. So <clears throat> I wish that we could move towards a more systematically safe road design um, and more bicycle friendly and pedestrian friendly. I just fear that it's too late. We've already built our country the way it is, and it would be a, it would be quite a, quite a challenging task to try to change it all now. Um, and another question I have for you guys is, do you get pulled over on your bikes? Is that possible? Like, do you get tickets on your bike? Um, if you drink and bike, do you, is that a crime? I'm just curious. But anyways, that's a very interesting video. Great work by Bicycle Dutch. And I will put that link for the, de for the video in the description below. So check out that original. And let me know what you guys want me to look at next. Thank you so much for joining, and I will see you next time.